Coming. Okay. Welcome everyone uh, to the humble Emacs introduction workshop. Um, my my colleague uh, who wanted to to assist me uh, with this uh, actually figured out that he d or just uh, realized that he doesn't have time now, so <laughs> he left me on my own. But it's okay. I think we can manage. And. Um, he was here for the cool tricks to, uh, to get you excited about Emacs, and I'm here for the boring stuff and the introduction. So if you are still interested in cool tricks, I know a few, but I can't uh, show that many, uh, you can come around tomorrow again. Uh, during the lunch break, he will be here again, and then you can uh, take a look at certain aspects of his uh, way of using Emacs. So um, first of all, uh, who here is and uh, doesn't know anything about Emacs or doesn't use Emacs at all. Okay? Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. And the other ones are uh, hardcore users or intermediate users or something. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to first introduce you to the, I don't know, somewhat arcane or different uh, terminology used in the Emacs world. And uh, also, um, well, how to get started doing something with that. And um, Maybe also, it's very important, uh, a bit of history, um, how it came to be. So Emacs is one of the oldest uh, text editing systems uh, you can imagine or are still in use, um, which is and originated from something called Tico Editor, Macros, that's where the name is coming from actually, and um, was of course developed at MIT. and. Um, as you can see, there were different uh, flavors and iterations of uh, Emacs during the whole time. And the one we are looking at today, or mostly, which is mostly used today, uh, is the GNU Emacs implementation, which uh, was started or published by Richard Stallman in 1985, which is also my birth year. <laughs> and, um, then there was a brief uh, forking going on with X Emacs. Well, it wasn't very brief, uh, but by now it's uh, almost uh, over. <laughs> and we are back to mostly GNU Emacs today, which is quite okay, uh, quite nice because it's less fragmentation and less duplication in the community. So we have pretty good product there. So um, you could actually say it's the oldest still maintained open source project, but I'm not sure if it's true. MIT scheme may be a contender, so. <laughs> but it's uh, probably the most widely used and oldest for that, or whatever, you know, combination of these uh, properties. Uh, and it, huh? X Emacs, I think it still lives. Does anyone use it? Um, it's, it still exists, at least. And uh, there, yeah, right, there was a brief period, or maybe even, even long period, where it was quite advanced. It had, had a graphical user interface, uh, way before uh, GNU Emacs did, for example. And uh, only when Stallman uh, turned over maintainership, <laughs> it started to pick up some steam again. I think that's uh, somewhat correlated. But for now, and there are dozens of other um, forks and small re-implementations and blah, blah, blah. So this is only, these are only some milestones, nothing uh, comprehensive. But just so you get the perspective that it's a pretty old thing, actually, which still makes sense to use today. So what can you do with Emacs? Uh, first of all, uh, of course, you can do gaming. Uh, you can, that's pretty important, actually, for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, I already started. Um, then uh, most people tend to use it for coding or source control management also. Um, it's uh, somewhat interrelated. And generally, text processing. I mean, coding is a special case of text processing, maybe. Um, but also for authoring. Uh, prose or for writing blog posts or email. What presentations? Sh yeah, this presentation is written in Emacs, by the way. Uh, I can show it later. Uh, it's uh, generated from an Emacs uh, mode uh, and exported to HTML. That's how that works. Or you can also edit LaTeX with it quite conveniently and stuff like that. You can use it for system administration. Like um, there's a process manager built in that works uh, on all POSIX systems, and I don't use it like for that myself, but some people do. Or you can uh, there's a shell built in, no multiple shells actually, <laughs> or terminals, terminal emulators. Um, 
file management is also a very strong point. Uh, um, so it can completely replace your, I don't know, we call it uh, conqueror. No, yeah, you know the file manager, <laughs> the finder. Um, and I think even uh, it's even a bit more convenient. And you can use it for basically any kind of application. So you could say Emacs is like a an application framework. Uh, if it wouldn't sound so negative, so <laughs> I won't say it. Uh, Emacs is mostly uh, an environment. Is a nice way to put it, maybe. So uh, some properties of Emacs, um, or why is it? Why does it work like the, the it works? Is uh, the main reason I think, and that's why we have it in this track, is because uh, Lisp is its e extension language, or is it? It's Elisp. It's a special. Uh, case or special implementation or dialect of Lisp um, is uh, its extension language, but that is actually oh sorry I forgot an A there. Uh, it, that's actually saying not enough. Uh, Emacs itself is completely uh, like 90% of it. Uh, uh, what you use as a user uh, is written in Elisp itself. So if you want to extend it, you don't get some tacked on second class uh, extension interface like you do with most editors you actually get to work with the core uh, functions that build up the system. And that's where the, where the power comes from, really. So you could say that's very dangerous, because of course you can uh, really uh, fuck it up and destroy your Emacs. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also very powerful. So it's a bit like Unix in that regard, I'd say. Um, then uh, a r the main strength of it is uh, the user interface concept. I will, of course, present that here uh, in a while. And um, because it unifies all kinds of um, tasks uh, through the same kind of interface. So you, once you learn uh, how to operate the basics, which is hopefully what you take from here, uh, you can basically live inside Emacs and learn the stuff while you're working with it. And uh, if you get a new extension, um, most of it is obvious or self-explanatory. So that's a really good concept. Imagine or compare that to I don't know, uh, Eclipse, for example. I don't know much about Eclipse, but uh, of course, each thing comes with its own GUI, and you have to learn the GUI again. I think it's comparable to functional programming, object-oriented programming, maybe. I don't know. So you have, with object-oriented programming or class-based interface programming, you have to learn each interface, and with functional programming, data programming, you have just some basic data types, and you just have to understand how to work with them, and then it clicks, and then it works. Um, another thing is, which stems from the Lisp part as well, I think, uh, is that you don't need to restart it, or not very often at least. Uh, if you install an extension, for example, you just load it and uh, it mutates the system somewhat, or it uh, installs itself in the system, you call it, and then it's there. Unlike, for example, web browsers, which most, well, most of them require you to restart it when you install an extension. Um, and that's, of course, from the, as we have heard today many times, uh, from the interactive development model that most Lisps uh, actually uh, employ, as we've seen in your talk, <laughs> especially. So uh, what you actually have is an environment that's just uh, just an, a Lisp uh, evaluation or a Lisp environment where you can evaluate expressions in, and it happens to be a useful thing or a useful environment to edit text in. Um, yeah, and from that um, you gain introspection. So, like Florian showed in this in initial closure talk, where you could just print the source of a function or the documentation. That's exactly the same in Emacs. So, can give a quick uh, can quickly show how that works. Uh, at the very bottom, I'm going to well execute a function. That's let's say. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Forward character, right? So forward character. It forwards the point, one character. And if I want to know what it does, I can ask for describe function. I, I run the describe function function, and um, say what does forward character do, and it tells me what it does. So it's completely introspective, and it knows about itself. It's self-aware. <laughs> Sounds a bit spooky. Um, Right, you get um, this context-sensitive kind of help system. So you are in a mode and uh, have some commands available, and it's documenting itself because the mode or the, the environment knows what's available and uh, knows the documentation. So it all works kind of nicely. Um, 
the base system comes with more than uh, probably even more than a thousand or thousands of commands uh, which are ready at hand so very primitive ones like the one you saw uh, forward card which just moves the point one to the right even that thing is a function entering uh, anything into the buffer is also a function so everything or a command actually so you can call it interactively like I just did um, that means you have lots of building blocks, lo lots of Lego blocks uh, you can uh, build extensions from and everything the, the core system does is exposed as a function for you to write extensions. Um, right, as I hinted at, there are, there are over 30 years of development uh, in, in total. So the concepts and stuff have evolved over a long time and um, the implementation is quite solid, I, could, I would say. Maybe the guile part is still missing. <laughs> it's coming, it's being worked on. Um, Right, uh, another advantage is that uh, yeah, uh, it has a very uh, big community and uh, many uh, old time users which really uh, uses have used this for all their life, um, which are also mo most of the time very helpful and uh, friendly, um, which led to a huge amount of extensions and there's the awesome Emacs wiki, which contains everything you can imagine. If you just think of this, something you want to do you just uh, type it in there and most of the time somebody has already written a snippet for that and if not then you find the building blocks to do it yourself but that's more advanced and I won't cover how to write your own extensions in this talk or in this workshop of course uh, that's uh, something more profound well it's not so difficult actually we can maybe we can take a look at it if you're interested I'm I want to keep this a bit open because I, 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 first of all I'm 50% uh, of the personal resources now and uh, I uh, I only want to get you going, and then you can, for example, uh, suggest something you you are interested in, or I don't know, somebody likes uh, w programs a certain language, and then how does it work in Emacs? So we could do something like that. Um, there are a few, mm, yeah, more widely used things, or not wi more widely used in the sense, um, which are based on the concepts of Emacs or are clones of Emacs, like GNU Readline, for example, the thing which most of the time sits in your shell um, to make command history and reverse search possible uh, has by default Emacs key bindings. So all navigational and search uh, key bindings, they work like in stock Emacs. Um, that's where that's coming from. Um, there are lightweight uh, implementations like this micro MG is micro Emacs with the, with the G for some reason uh, or um, GNU Xyle. They are like Vim. Many people say Vim is so nice because it's starts up uh, instantly and uh, it's available everywhere well it's kind of true OpenBSD ships mg by default too and it's it's a very lightweight implementation you can just fire it up on a file and it's it's there immediately the the normal emacs is a bit more sluggish of course well it's not so bad on modern machines anymore there's the terrible aquamax thing that's basically obsolete i uh just put it in there because it's yeah, some people use it but i try to accommodate it to uh, os 10 and it's not really uh, widely used anymore. There's um, Climax on m many, many other um, re-implementations in different Lisps, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the ELISP uh, dialect that Emacs is mostly written in is not not a very nice Lisp. Um, I mean, it works and it does the job, but it's kind of uh, old-fashioned and uh, very, well, a bit crafty. For example, you don't even have namespaces. Like uh, all the other implementations we saw today, they have namespaces, and Elisp still doesn't have it, or you can't take it on anymore. So uh, very often the uh, people get the idea, well, uh, why not implement a Lisp in a, uh, an Emacs in a proper Lisp, and Climax is one of those attempts. Uh, there is uh, one for f in Scheme, it's called Edwin. Um, now there's somebody even started one in Clojure a few days ago. It was announced on Hacker News, I think. <laughs> so every Lisp has its own Emacs implementation, of course, and they all fail because um, the, as I said, the 30 years of development, they have yielded so or led to so many extensions, you can't really reproduce this in, in a reasonable amount of uh, uh, effort. And so nobody really succeeded in that so far. But that may change. Sometimes stuff happens. Uh, there's a Haskell. Of course, the Haskellers have to have their own. I don't know if it's used to you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's uh, apparently it's this the same concept, but with Haskell instead of Lisp. Um, then there's some nice uh, web browser, well, mostly Conqueror is the only web browser. Uh, Minnow is dead by now, unfortunately, uh, as they put it in there. It's a, it's an old uh, presentation. I just 
uh, updated a bit, but some parts are still in there which are not relevant anymore, unfortunately, but okay. Um, so Conqueror is a nice um, uh, implementation of uh, an Emacs, uh, an, a web browser based on Emacs ideas, so you get the same user interface concept um, built on Zool Runner, this uh, thing that runs beneath Firefox and uh, the like. And it exposes all functionality like uh, history backwards and stuff like that as functions as well, and you can just work with them. But um, the extension language or implementation language is JavaScript, of course. So it's, uh, it's nice, but also a bit limited. Or um, there's a window manager, Stump, Stump WM, um, which is what I'm using here. Uh, it's also based on the concepts of Emacs, but written in Common Lisp, and it manages your windows and has some different operations for that. Uh, so there are many things working in this, which uh, work in the same niche. And uh, if you use all these together, you most of the time stay in the Emacs way of doing things. Uh, if you have to leave the Emacs itself at all for some things like web browsing, it's most sometimes it's uh, the best way to do it because not everything works so well in W3M, right? <laughs> but mostly. So, um, okay, a few. Uh, uh, I don't know. Just a uh, few questions that might you might have, like why do you use Emacs instead of something like uh, NetBeans or Eclipse and IDE, a traditional IDE? Um, one main thing is that it's completely keyboard driven. So there, okay, it's not quite true anymore, uh, like the one I showed here. Uh, you see they have a menu bar up there and some, or uh, what is it called, tab bar and, and menu uh, also. So it's uh, a bit of, gained a bit of a graphical user interface, but most users actually deactivate this after a while. and because it gets in your way, uh, even this small amount of, uh, of graphical user interface. Oh, sorry. Um, and this actually, after a while, you get to appreciate that um, uh, you have 10 fingers and not just one arm. So uh, you don't have to touch the mouse for every thing you, uh, you want to do. Or some things in, in these IDEs are only possible by uh, using the mouse, or you have to come up with custom sh shortcuts, or I don't know. Or if even. If that only works if uh, you're lucky enough that somebody thought uh, this might be interesting to put on a shortcut. If it's not there and doesn't work, of course. So, because Emacs is written uh, with uh, keyboard-driven uh, interaction in mind, it, it works uh, very well with that. Um, for today's standards, the resource requirements are very low um, that for a full-blown IDE thing like that. So. Uh, back in the day, Emacs used to be uh, called uh, 8 megabytes and constantly swapping, but that's from the 80s or something when it took up 8 megabytes and was quite large, but today, by today's standards, it has increased a bit to, I don't know, 20 megabytes in the default uh, mode, but it's still very uh, lightweight compared to that. And, right, as I already said, you don't get distracted by GUI elements cluttering up your screen space, like in, uh, the default configuration of uh, NetBeans or Eclipse, you get the sidebars and top bars and bottom bars even, <laughs> so you just have a little square uh, of your uh, screen uh, estate left to actually code, um, which is what I like. Why not Vim? Uh, I think you used Vim, right? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I would say there's no real uh, argument. Uh, well of course, this is, all, uh, this is all subjective and a matter of taste. Um, you may use, you may prefer to use the mouse or uh, I don't know what, but um, it's my experience that I w is pretty liked working with uh, keyboard shortcuts. It's just faster for most things. Um, Vim is not as um, okay. This I got this one the other way around. Uh, so Emacs is all encom encompassing. Yeah, Vim is more uh, fits more with the Unix way of doing things. Like Vim is uh, the thing for editing text files and nothing else. And Emacs tries to be a general runtime system for every kinds of stuff. Um, so. I don't know, it's, it's a different model, and um, you just have to see if w which of those fits better with your uh, way of working or thinking. And of course, VimScript is a terrible extension language, and uh, we all know that, <laughs> I guess. I've never used it, um, but we still know it. So um, uh, having a Lisp is quite nice. Uh, having a pr well these, these kind of configuration language, they tend to grow into a, a terrible, contraptions which uh, uh, gain loops after a while and then uh, terrible variable scopes and it just a uh, Vim script seems to be one of those so as I said I can't tell from the first-hand experience but you can okay <laughs> so that's uh, that's a reason I'd say 
uh, if you prefer that, then take a look at Emacs. Okay, any questions so far um, for the meta part? <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so the from now on, this is going to be a bit more hands-on, and um, everyone who has a machine with them, uh, they could uh, install an Emacs right now on the for the operating system. I've collected a few uh, entry points for that. So if you are on a Debian or Ubuntu or Debian-based system, you can use this uh, snapshot repository uh, because um, the new version of Emacs 24.2 or something has been released just to few months ago, so it's not in, at least not in Debian stable, of course. Um, but I would recommend using it because it has some uh, ver some improvements for uh, user interface-wise, like nicer font rendering and nicer color theme support, and it's quite worth it. And also uh, a package manager, so that's what we're going to use uh, later on. Otherwise, it's a bit cumbersome to uh, install extensions. You have to do it manually or through your package manager, and it, of course, has old versions. Yeah. 24 something. It's, it doesn't matter which exactly. Um, 24.2 is the latest one. Mm, point two something. Ah, okay. That's just a release candidate. Yeah, but it's, I think it's available through all these, so you can choose whatever you like. Uh, right. I, I have no idea how the, well the Windows version works. I, I hear every now and then that uh, it has some issues, but uh, I hope there aren't too many Windows users. Uh, I can't help them. <laughs> yeah. You you can um, you will not be able to follow all uh, all things, but the the basic uh, movement and navi uh, navigation and uh, search blah 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 this all works the same. Um, but handling extensions that's uh, where Emacs twenty four is a is different and uh, better actually. Yes. Ymax no that's completely different. <laughs> well you can yeah you can use Ymax for uh, the basic stuff I think that should work. Uh, Ymax is quite interesting. I didn't mention that. It's a complete implementation, a pretty quit, pretty complete implementation of Emacs in the browser, for in JavaScript. I don't know. Is there a demo somewhere? Uh, live demo, right? Oh, sorry. See how slow it is to work with the mouse. Okay, uh, so <laughs> yeah, right. This doesn't work. I can't even navigate with Control N. So <laughs> no, you shouldn't use that. Uh, but it's an interesting hack. So you can, uh, if you are web developer and you need to put in you, you, you want to provide your users with a useful text area you should use that uh, <laughs> of course um, and the OS 10 packaging has very much improved since uh, last time I gave this uh, workshop so uh, you just go there or use homebrew and they should have a I don't know what's called DMG package thing and uh, it most of the time works out of the box please don't use this Aquamax that's obsolete <laughs> So I give you a few minutes to uh, I don't know get get set up and uh, I hope no issues arise with that anymore. Packaging is a bit of a of a problem with with Emacs. So I I have to think about how to do this. Now it can be. Uh, where's my actual Emacs? Oh, sorry, this is a bit annoying to use like that. Can you still read this if it's that size or is it too small? It's okay? Good. Yeah, I'll keep it that way then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Um, I don't have any d uh, data points on that, <laughs> but I think you should be fine with it with the stable one. Ah, green is installed and up to date. Uh, did you check whether it's available in testing? Uh, in, uh, 24 is available in testing. Okay, yeah. Debian. Hmm. 
Maybe I'm moving down here now. This can get a bit annoying. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait a second. Ah, there's Ubuntu PPA and apparently, so maybe that's better for Ubuntu. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You can use it, but you can't uh, do the uh, customization later on. Then. So the, the basic stuff works the same. Otherwise, it's just different for every platform how to do it, or you have to do it very manually. And in 24, it's very easy to do. So there. Maybe I can. Will you follow along? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> don't feel obliged. <laughs> Is everyone aboard? Still hacking? Aren't you gonna fall? <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe you will. <laughs> So while you're installing, I can show you the uh, the Lisp interpreter here. So this is just a enter something, and I can evaluate that. And for instance, it shows it down there. So there's a Lisp system in there somewhere, hiding it in there. <laughs> I think something like that works. No, sorry. Ha. Huh. What's the? Ah, Yelm, right? No, R E L M. It's <laughs> it's really a stupid name. Yes, right. That's how it works. So there's Elisp. And of course, in old school tradition, everything is uppercase here. It's really nice. Yeah, <laughs> shouting in the 80s. <laughs> in the 70s, maybe. What happens if I call off forward? Interesting. Aren't there also keywords here? Yes. <laughs> it's 
Someone still need need some time? Everybody said? Okay. Okay, seems like everyone is kind of uh, ready. Okay, no one try. <laughs> Process finished. Ah, I have another uh, and more interesting example, I think. You can do toolbar mode. Oh, sorry. No, why doesn't that work? Ah, so, <laughs> of course, you have to pass a zero. <laughs> that makes sense. So I just modified my environment, you see. Um, tap, no, uh, tap bar mode, what's the other one? Menu bar? There, it's gone. You can also get rid of the scroll bar, I think. So now, that's how Emacs looked about <laughs> a while ago. <laughs> When you started, of course, that's not uh, very approachable, and that's one of the then one of the drawbacks. Maybe the the ramp up time is a bit uh, take it's it's a bit longer, so you just you can't dive immediately in. But that's a price to pay. It's, it's worth the price. It's okay. The the shell the wrapper, uh, it's meta x and then i e l m for inter I don't know inter emacs. <laughs> What's that actually? Yes. Interactive. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say here, but I guess it's right. So I just opened the documentation of that function again. Uh, and I can also jump to the source file defining that function. So let's see what that says. Maybe it's in there. Oh, yes. We are d right now looking at the in an, uh, in a gzip file. That's true. Um, Ah, here. This uh, is was created in 1994. So, some archaeology here, and we find. I don't. It still doesn't say what I E L M resolves to. Thank you. But you're probably right. Okay, but that's for later. <laughs> Forget everything you saw. I'm going to reactivate those so it looks the same on you. And menu bar mode, right? Ah, wonderful. Wonderful. Everyone fine? Good to go? Still down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the network here is not very fast. Ah, okay. Yes, it's a bit of... Yeah, we should have done that. Good. Uh, I'm glad that it, the network actually handles this. Yeah, 24 is great. 24 anything. <laughs> okay, maybe I can already proceed because uh, 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 slowly with the next steps. Um, because the the barbecue event is looming, so <laughs> don't want to keep you too long here. Um, oh, by the way, we can, as I said, we can continue uh, in the lunch break tomorrow. If you have finished uh, eating, then just come here and we can... Uh, Help you fiddle or f help you with problems if you if you want to explore it a bit more overnight. So, okay, first we need to learn a bit of uh, conventions here. So uh, that's what we basically need to bootstrap ourselves into Emacs uh, or our brain into Emacs. Um, there are um, a few ways to uh, shortcuts are um, uh, of course uh, everything is based on the keyboard shortcut on keyboard shortcuts. So you need to n know how to read them and um, it's the Emacs way to express that is uh, uh, with a leading s a uppercase C with a dash means um, press the key following the dash with control and M with a, uh, followed by a dash means meta 
uh, together with the key that's following the dash. Uh, and meta, and on today's keywords, it's mostly the alt key, uh, except for Apple keywords, I think. That's the command key, by default, at least. Although they do have an, an alt key, but you have to remap that if you, if you want that. Uh, so you read this as control M, which uh, in most other modern systems is uh, expressed like that, or control uh, maybe is contracted, and that um, means you press control together with M, and uh, in this case, this will create a line break, so if you press control M here, you get line breaks. Um, there's another way to combine um, key sequences, and that's uh, with a space. So this says press control plus X, then and then f uh, press M. So uh, it's uh, you start from uh, the beginning w without holding down control. So control X and then M will get you into the message mode, which uh, is for composing in an email. Yes. Yes, there's something else. So that would be written like uh, uppercase, uh, like that, sorry, uh, C, X, C, M. So the it doesn't uh, stay activated or something. Yes, it means you have to release, uh, release the control key in that case. Um, oh yes, one more thing. Uh, what also helps a lot is, because many sequences uh, start with control or are combined with control, uh, it helps to remap the control key to your, u anyway, uh, useless um, caps lock key, because then you can use your uh, pinky for pressing it instead of, oh, you can still use your pinky, but you have to uh, twist your hand in a bad way, and then it leads to uh, repetitive strain injuries, I heard. Okay, um, so that's how you read this stuff. And yeah, here's an example for pressing, con um, holding down control. So you don't have to press control X, then release control F, um, but you can hold down control and then press X and F. That's how that's uh, uh, read. Uh, how you have to interpret this. Um, and that's usu the usual way to do is, is to hold down control. So it's a bit like playing piano, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. OK. Everyone uh, on the same base for now? <laughs> um, so this is what uh, we need, the vocabulary we need to learn the next, uh, or to understand the next slides, which will introduce you to First of all, the help system, because once you know the help system, you know how to help yourself, and the rest is, uh, yeah, just falls, uh, now falls in place. It's not true, but mostly. So, um, as you now know, this reads as press Control H and then follow, uh, followed by T, so Control H, then T, without control, and that will take you to the interactive tutorial, uh, which is, um, it's, it's just a, a text file and um, you are taught what I'm trying to teach you now as well uh, in an in interactive way and you edit this text while uh, learning the commands. So it's quite cool if you uh, want to, uh, I don't know, you probably won't keep everything in mind now and if you want to uh, train a bit then just start that tutorial. Y you only have to remember this shortcut then and uh, all the rest uh, will, uh, yeah, the rest you will learn there. Um, then there are many other um, help commands, like Control H M takes you to the to the help view or to the help of the current uh, modes. You are this uh, um, buffer. Uh, I didn't explain that yet, so um, doesn't matter right now. But uh, if you if you do something with Emacs, y your Emacs is in certain modes, and it has uh, always has one major mode and some minor modes. And uh, Control H M takes you to the documentation of the major mode, and I think the minor modes are included here as well. So you have a you have something that you can read top down, and uh, hopefully in the end uh, get a big picture. I don't use that very much, so I don't know the specifics. Um, what more? What I use all the time is Control H K, for example. So um, you can try that now in your Emacs if it has started up already. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It shouldn't take so long. Um, so press Control H and followed by K, and then it will ask you. Right in the in the area below. I don't know if you can see it on the on the screen now. Um, at the very bottom, which is called the interactive, uh, what is it called? The mini buffer, um, which is something uh, Emacs will ask you questions through and uh, is interacts with you through this little slot down there. So there it asks you to. Uh, for a key you want to be uh, to get the help or the description of so you can s press control H K and then press I don't know I and I 
pressing I without anything in the default mode we are in now means uh, insert the letter I. So it is bound to many ordinary text characters, self insert N. Um, so, uh, well, I runs the command self insert command, which is an interactive built in function in blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter, but this is a link. You can follow it as we just saw. And um, this just means if I press I, I want to enter I. So this is uh, the self insertion command. Not so interesting, but uh, control HK again. Um, let's try what we just had, um, control X M. So you can enter any combination down there. And it takes you to the documentation of the function that's currently bound to this, or of the command that's currently bound to this uh, shortcut or key combination. So now we see control XM runs the command compose mail, which is an interactive compiled list function, blah, blah, blah. This technical detail, but it's all exposed to you. So there's nothing hidden, really. Uh, it's all, everything is always there. Alex. Oh, I have never turned that on. <laughs> Does anyone know? Uh, try um, meta X and then. Yes, right. Uh, you could just, can you uh, just kill your Emacs, uh, completely close it, and then delete your, uh, in your home directory, there's a f directory called dot .emacs, dot .d, or a dot .emacs file, and just de delete those. Okay, yeah, then delete that. And this should be the culprit. Um, so, right, it tells you that this key is bound to that function, and you can also reach it through the menu bar. The, the menu bar is somewhat integrated in this uh, key chain concept, so they are virtual keys, th these submenus. And um, it also tells you here the signature of that, that command, which is just a regular list function with some optional arguments. So you could just go ahead and call that here. Compose mail, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Uh, let's say compose mail to uh, Then let's see what happens. I can evaluate this with pressing Control X, Control E when I'm behind an expression, and then it takes me there. So uh, this is just what the key binding does. It, it executes this function, and then there may be some um, interactive arguments as well, which are documented there. So then you get an idea what this uh, key is bound to and what it does, and you can of course. Um, uh, ask the other way around. You know the name of the function, but you don't know what key or what key combination you find it uh, under. So you could say Control H W for where. Uh, it's actually where is command. So uh, where do I find this command on my keyboard? Um, and you could say something like I don't know search uh, forward with regular expression matching. So the default search is not regular expression based, but you want to know how to search for regular expressions, and you guessed that the command is probably called search forward regular expression. I didn't actually know that right now, so I just guessed it. And then you press enter, and then it tells you down there in the mini buffer uh, that this command right now is not bound to any key, so you're out of luck. <laughs> but of course, you can still call it, but I will show you later how that works. Um, control HB is similar to the, um, to the control HM at the beginning. But it's much more concise. It just shows you, uh, just gives you the raw uh, mapping, key mappings, and key bindings. And uh, so let's, let's see what we already know. X, uh, control, X, M. There it is. So uh, this is uh, an overview of all the bindings which are currently active. And you can just sc uh, scroll through that to discover stuff. So one of the things. Uh, working with Emacs is that you discover the new stuff all the time because it's so huge. <laughs> and uh, you, you meet another Emacs user and he tells you his tricks and you tell him uh, your tricks and all their tricks, whatever. And um, uh, there's always something you didn't know about. So every other week you learn something completely, uh, you were completely uh, oblivious of and then uh, it's super useful and has been sitting there all the time hiding between all the functions. It's really cool. It's like, a, uh, like an adventure game. Ah, it reminds me of what uh, TJ said about game programming like a game. Uh. Okay, so, um, right, and there's also control HF, which is actually quite very much the same as control HW, except it also tells you the documentation if it's not bound to a key, so I don't know, it doesn't really uh, give make much of a difference. Uh, so we could compose mail again, and it tells you that, it, uh, it gives you documentation and it still says where it's bound, so if it's not bound, it would just say it's not bound here. Uh, control HF like uh, search forward regex. 
yeah, there's no um, there's no key binding here then. So it's, that's a bit redundant. It's probably uh, evolved somehow, and one of them was there before the other one, and now we have both. That's also something you discover in Emacs a lot: some duplication of functionality and some uh, inconsistencies. But most of the time, it's uh, pretty uh, well thought out. But it's with big systems, it's like that. Uh, it will show all of the key bindings which are currently active. So um, it depends on what mode your file or the buffer you are looking at is in. So if you are in your email mode, you have different lists there. So it's, um, it's context sensitive. Um, that's one of the points I had, right? So uh, yeah, this would show you everything that's available. It can be a quite a long list. <laughs> but it, as I said, it's most I mostly use it to discover uh, how to use a new mode or something, if it doesn't make sense right away. Um, one thing I didn't mention here now is the info mode. Uh, I don't use it myself very often, but uh, it's actually quite nice. Uh, you press Control H I, of course. You see, the some of them are really a thing, just a prefix name. Uh, um, so if you press Control H I, you get to this info uh, browser thing, and it's uh, nicely formatted and laid out uh, documentation of all the stuff you have installed. For example, I don't know, make file is. Uh, Automake is here, or no, stuff like that. So everything that's installed in your system and has an info file, most of mm, the GNU projects I do, um, but not many other. <laughs> um, is Guile in here? I don't know. Oh yeah, there it is. And there's, yes, uh, there's a man page mode too, that has a bit more. There, but the, um, this info mode is quite, uh, it's, it's a bit more advanced, so you have, uh, it's more like a web browser, and you have many nice features. You can even have bookmarks. And ah, SICP is also shipped. Well, did I install it? No, I installed it, I think. But um, it's it's quite a nice format to read. See, it's uh, even with uh, nice headings, and it's quite a cool thing. It's not used very often. I see, you learned something already. <laughs> even though he's a, young, a long time user. So, uh, info mode is also nice. Um, of course, the most useful one is uh, the Emacs info. Here, there it is. I don't know how to search in that. Maybe so, like that. Uh, I have no idea. So, there's um, Elisp intro, for example, Emacs Lisp intro, even two. Nice. Um, Yes, right. Somewhere there's an Emacs. Each Emacs package comes with an info page, or many of them. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, so I forgot to include this here, but it's cool. Uh, right, then now we know how to help ourselves and how to look stuff up. That's already m most stuff you need uh, uh, yeah, to get going. But there's one problem with Emacs, uh, that's terminology. Because it's so old, uh, it uses different words for most stuff we use today because it's coming from a completely different uh, context, from uh, some AI lab. Or, and, uh, uh, stuff we use on the desktop today is from Microsoft or Apple, and they have different terminology, and it worked differently. So we have to map th those uh, names in our, in our head, but it's not as terrible as it sounds. So uh, we have to know that, for example, in Emacs terminology, a frame is what we call a window. So the left side is Emacs, the right side is uh, what we how we would call it. Um, so this thing here is a frame, and this is a frame. Um, and a window is actually a split window, or a split. It's like, like this. We have two windows in the frame now, okay? So this is one frame, this is another frame. Uh, sorry, this is one window, this is another window. can be a bit confusing, so. Um, then we have uh, buffers, which show up in the documentation all the time. And um, a buffer is actually the, um, the content of a... Um, uh, or, or yeah, that can be displayed in a window. Yeah, I can say that, I think. Um, but not all buffers are visible. I do I, do I, do, does anyone know here? Is, uh, can buffers be uh, not accessible? Or do you know it? I don't know. Uh, I think they are always uh, available. So um, A buffer is something you can display in a window, and you can display the same buffer in two windows, for example, like we have right now. So if I enter something here, I see it in both windows, of course. Um, they are so the windows are views on the, on the same buffer different views on the same buffer. Uh, I don't know why I put view in here. It doesn't make much sense, I think. Um, so it's more like the, m the model, actually, uh, in programmer's terms. So they can even be at different offsets, you see? Uh, now I can scroll down here. Oh, there's my text. So now I have two uh, views into the same file. If it's a long file, then I can compare stuff, for example. So that's a buffer. And the buffer is used for everything. So um, as we saw, if I look up some function or some key, then it uh, pops up a window with a buffer, and the buffer is just um, like the buffer I have above uh, um, up here, 
but it's a read only, so I can't uh, enter stuff. But I could make it writable if I wanted, but it doesn't make much sense. Um, but other than that, it's the same uh, thing. So there's no separate concept for documentation, uh, no no documentation viewer or anything like that. Um, everything um, Emacs uh, wants to display resides in some buffer, and you can access those uh, buffers programmatically. So if you write some Elisp code that uh, knows how to interact with the contents of a buffer, then, uh, well, that's basically what all Emacs modes are. They interact with contents of buffers. And if I uh, press I and it calls the function self-insert I, then it puts uh, this character at the position my point is residing at. This is the next thing we have to learn. A cursor is called a point in Emacs, uh, or the cursor is called the point. Um, so yeah, it's not too difficult. Um, then for selections, we have the word region. Um, yeah, it's okay, not no overlap there. Um, and many commands operate on regions or uh, optionally operate on regions and stuff like that. You have to know that. Uh, then there is kill for delete so and uh, also for quit. So uh, the command for quitting Emacs, okay, I didn't tell that, no, uh, is kill Emacs. Um, then the command for deleting something is, um, if you, you have to press control H, K, and then press the delete key, it will tell you it's called, oh, it's called delete forward character. Sorry, it's not kill forward character. It's a bit inconsistent there. Uh, but like there's this one, kill s expressions. Well, kill is usually it's just for deleting anything. So um, the 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 clipboard, for example, is called the kill ring. So everything you you cut from your buffer is it will be uh, put in your kill ring. It, ca it sounds a bit uh, martial. I, uh. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> this the kill ring will only contain stuff you if you. Uh, uh, killed one than more than one character or something like that. So, if you uh, press backspace, it won't put every character into the kill ring. That would be very annoying. So, only if you do something like that. <laughs> ah, okay. No, if you kill a buffer, then it's gone. Yeah, unless you persisted it somewhere, but it's gone. Um, right, and uh, pasting is called yanking. So, I think an in Vim it's the the other way around or something. It's I don't know why. <laughs> It's also a bit annoying if you already know Vim, then it's confusing, or VI. So uh, you kill this, and then you press Control y for yank, and th this uh, pastes, it pastes it again. So that's how it works. Um, then we have the mode line, which is uh, this one here, the gray one. That's what we call status bars in most other mm, programs these days. And uh, yeah, the key combination is called a key sequence or key chain, chord, some, there are some various words for that, and uh, just have to be aware of those. I'm going to put up the presentation somewhere and link to it on, uh, on the workshop page, so you can look up that. Uh, um, I don't know if there's a terminology uh, thing, a uh, cheat sheet in the documentation, I don't think so. Um, but I think it's okay, we can live with that, and it's, it doesn't add uh, much confusion in once you've learned that, uh, uh, in my experience. Okay? Everything clear so far? You don't have to learn and memorize everything now, so you will pick it up while you do it. Um, okay, now we need to learn a few basic commands. So right now you are in a position where you could actually look uh, everything up, but that's still annoying. So you need how to board something. If you started doing something like, I don't know, press control S to start a search. And now you decide you don't want to search, actually, uh, you have to abort this somehow. And every command that uh, requires input and you decide not to input something because you will change your mind, uh, you can abort with control G. Or I don't think that makes, that, that's not a memoizable no. word. Give up, yeah, maybe that, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> not that And you can also, most of the time, c uh, pressing escape uh, three times, <laughs> hammering on the escape key, uh, uh, most of the time that also works, but I found that it, Sometimes, I don't know, it doesn't work, so I stick to Control-G. Um, something like that. But uh, I never use the terminal Emacs. I always use the graphical one, so something else. I don't know, maybe there's a reason for that. Um, right, and then there is uh, Meta-X, which is your entry point to everything uh, if you don't know. Or, yeah, if you don't have a key binding, for example, for a function, but you still want to use it, you press Meta-X and then enter the name of the function to call it. So. Uh, meta X, as I said, uh, is mo most of the time is Alt X on your keyboard, um, and then you can press Tab to get um, 
some suggestions. <laughs> um, so let's say the function we had before, the search forward, you can always press tab, com uh, tab complete there. And uh, if you don't know uh, what to type, you can press it twice and then you get a buffer again, uh, suggesting uh, possible completions. Uh, right, and now you can enter a search for a reg expression and press uh, return and then it will fire off the command. So we can now search for a regular expression. Oh, okay, that was not very interesting. Um, so that works for every uh, command there is, uh, like even forward character, yeah? To move the point one character to the right. Um, that's your uh, way to communicate with the process, basically, uh, the, or the, the low-level way to communi communicate with the process. So um, to activate a new mode, for example, you need this to install it, and then you want to use it, then you call it uh, through MetaX. Okie dokie. So then we need to know how to use... That's really annoying at the beginning, even in this tutorial, I think. It's not... It's, it comes a bit later, and then you s end up with all these uh, split windows and don't know how to get rid of them, and you have to restart Emacs all the time <laughs> because you don't know it. So I'm going to put this first. Um, this all works with the number keys, except for the last one. So Control x 2 uh, splits your window uh, horizontally, and Control x Control x 3 splits it vertically, and you can repeat this ever until you have no screen left. Right. Uh, what I did now was Control x one so I have a few uh, windows, and then I press Control X1, and it will uh, remove all the windows except for the one my point is currently in. So I will, okay, these are all the same, this is a bit boring. Let's put these two, and then I'm in, I'm in the upper one, or let's go to the lower one, and I press Control X1, and the other one, the other ones are gone. That's pretty nice. And um, Control X0 is the other way around, yeah. So I don't know where how it figures out where to put your point then, but it, uh, up in the one you were before, so it removes the current uh, window, or kills the current window. Um, and then there is a somewhat uh, uh, to type Control X O, uh, which uh, takes you to the next window, uh, to the other window. So you can go in, in cycles like that by pressing Control X O all the time. It's a lot to type, right? Um, there is this. Sh yes, yes, please. Yes. So you have to be careful. If you, re you rebind something globally, it may, may collide with local bindings, and of course. Yeah, winner mode is nice. Um, oh, damn. Yeah, right, for the shift. Uh, yeah, that's annoying. So there, there are some trade-offs. <laughs> um, I think winner mode is even shipped with Emacs now, yeah. So, no, wait, it doesn't work with control. There was, there was another one. Uh, oh, shift, sorry. No, it doesn't. Uh, there was another one. Yeah, I forgot how it called. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have it in here somewhere. Wind move. So wind move. Move. Uh, oh. Yes, that's what I do. So I, I run this and it sets the wind move key bindings, which allow me to press shift and then use the arrow keys to move into a direction uh, and save in instead of going in cycles, which is quite handy. Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> that would be annoying. No, uh, there is one, but it's pretty unwieldy to use, actually, uh, uh, especially if you want to redo stuff. I actually have no idea how it works. I, I know how to use it, but I have no idea how it works, so I can't explain it, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe somebody else can. It's explained in the tutorial, but okay, but it doesn't work as your uh, usual uh, undo command, so um, it's a bit tricky. But I can, it's, it's bound to control underscore. No, sorry. Yes, there's a tree mode. Yeah. 
yeah. It's pretty fancy, so yeah, it's actually a tree structure, I think. But it's not very apparent how the tree looks. So this visualization mode is quite nice, and the, uh, the other guy wanted to uh, actually uh, show that, but um, I, I don't know how to use it, but it's interesting. And I think there's also a way to dumb down the undo, so it works like in every other editor. Um, but I'm going to show the keybinding for that later on. But there is, so um, this is a tricky thing. <laughs> So, as I said, some concepts are very different from, uh, not only differently named, but also work very differently. Um, which what is also nice, I didn't, I only mentioned the kill ring, but uh, I mentioned the kill ring, but I didn't actually show how to use it. So, uh, if I have some text here, and then I kill this and this, and now I yank it, but I want to, and, and I can toggle uh, my old uh, kills. So, it's a ring of uh, all stuff I have previously killed. Or there's there's some limit, but I can uh, um, cycle through everything that I ki recently killed. Uh, so that's why it ca it's called kill ring, and um, that's quite handy. So you can uh, cut multiple items and paste them in different order and stuff like that. Mm. Right. So another thing you have to keep in mind how to that it works a bit differently. Okay. Any more questions so far? Just ask like you do, that's great. Um, so that's how you get rid of windows. Most of the time you have to remember how to get rid of them, so control X1 <laughs> it's, uh, is the way to do it. Now, um, uh, zero, yeah, that kills the current one. It depends, okay, yeah. Some, some uh, uh, modes, if you do something, they pop up a window, and but they leave the point in the one you are right in right now, and some they move, and so you have to do the right thing, of course, yeah. That's a bit tricky. Um, but it's cool because uh, every, mode, once you've learned this, these basics and navigation uh, techniques, um, every mode builds on these buffers and windows and it just works the same. So if you've learned it, all is fine. Um, so right, of course sometimes you want to write files to the disk or s uh, so save buffers and um, uh, that works by connecting a buffer to a file um, name basically. Uh, I think it's connected to the name, not to the inode. But I'm maybe wrong. Um, so, um, as I said, th these buffers are—they are everywhere, but and they all have names. But not all of them are connected to a file. But you can just—you uh, uh, can just say Control X, Control S to save the current buffer to some file. If it's already connected to the file name, it will just uh, write it de there. If it's not, then it will ask you for a name. So we can uh, some. Ah, this is my, my scratch buffer here. It's a, it's a buffer that's always there, which contains stuff you, uh, you can just enter stuff there and evaluate expressions. So let's save it there. So now it wrote this. And um, if you press Control X, Control S now again, it writes it there again. So that's easy. Uh, there's a connection between the file name and the buffer now. Um, if I decide to write it to a different file name, I press Control X, Control W which is like save as in most other uh, systems, and then it will ask me for another name. And from then on, it's this buffer is connected to that name. So you uh, basically change the reference uh, to another name, and now it writes there. Simple, right? So once you know that, you know how to write files, and then you can do most stuff. <laughs> um, of course, you sometimes you also want to open a file, and um, that helps. Oh, I don't have killing buffers here. Maybe it they will come in. So um, you press Control X, Control F. Uh, oh, sorry, this is not find file, but find file. <laughs> um, find file for opening file, and um, yeah, it works as you would expect. This buffer is now um, automatically connected to this file name. So if I save that again, it will not ask me for the file name, of course, because it already knows uh, that it's connected. Um, then. Uh, of course, to uh, switch between buffers, you need to, and uh, other than by splitting windows, that's annoying. Sometimes you just want to switch uh, the full screen view, for example, or the, the content of one window to another buffer. That's what you use Control X B for. So, Control X B, and then it asks you for a buffer name, and um, by default, it will sh uh, have the f last one you uh, you visited here. It also even says that, um, and. If uh, you want the default, you just press return. So switching between two buffers, back and forth between two buffers, is always Control X B return. Control X B return. It seems a bit uh, uh, complicated, but it's not that bad actually. So 
could rebind that to something else, but I'm not aware of anything. And uh, it's actually quite okay. Can be done. Um, working with the default key bindings is probably a good idea because uh, many tutorials and explanations build on this knowledge, and if you memorize them, uh, at least for the basic stuff, uh, that helps. If you don't, uh, and and you won't run into all these uh, collisions with major modes, which assume that you work with the default bindings. So there's no conflict resolution or something. What you define is just what uh, matter what holds everything and. It's good to stick to the defaults in this case. Um, and of course, you can uh, do, you can hold down the control key. So you press control X, control B, and then you get a, another buffer containing all buffers. So I heard you like buffers. <laughs> it puts uh, up this list. And it's actually an interactive menu buffer. So it's also read only. And you can uh, see, uh, you can overview of which buffer is connected to which file. That's nice. And you can also press return on the uh, on one of those items and it jumps there right so that's uh, like uh, like a menu basically and this buffer remains open so the buffer list is called buffer list buffer is called buffer list and then if you could press control x b then it's it's there again so it's just like any other buffer really convenient okay so that's the basics you need to work with files and buffers basically you can uh, yeah question so far it's easy right um, now is the point where uh, you have to uh, I don't know <laughs> you have to force yourself to do this because it really pays off it but it's a bit annoying at, at the beginning um, instead of using the arrow keys uh, which are inconveniently placed on the lower right side or lower uh, right side of your keyboard most of the time or even further right to the right um, uh, you use uh, different keys or different combinations which are located uh, in the somewhere on your keyboard where your hand already is. So you don't have to move your actual your arm all the time to the lower right corner of your keyboard. So it saves uh, it really saves time, and um, you just have to move your fingers to do that. And these commands are most of the most of them are uh, memo. What do you call it? M m mnemonic. <laughs> uh, so Control F is uh, forward character. And control B is backwards character. So you can press, you can hold down the control key. Uh, it's, as I said, if you bind it to caps lock, it's very convenient. Um, with, a, with your pinky, and then you use your index finger to uh, press F, your left index finger to press F, and your right index finger to press B. That's easy, and you don't have to move your hand around. Huh? Yes, of course, it depends if you're right or left handed, right? <laughs> But F for backwards and B for backwards. Oh, sorry, F for forwards and B for backwards. That's nice. So uh, don't expect every command to be bound to a key like that, which is uh, memorizable like that. But in case, it's nice. And Control N and P, that works for uh, lines. So And you can use that with your right hand. If you are working with, uh, uh, well, uh, with a standard layout. Uh, there are some people here I know. Oh, no, he's not here. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how well it works with uh, Neo and or, or uh, Dvorak or something like that. Um, no experience with that. So um, that's movement. These movement commands are work in many modes. Um, of course, uh, the basic ones work in many modes. In read-only modes, you can often press N, P, F, B uh, without control um, to move forward, backwards, up and down. So of course, because you can't enter text there, it's just uh, bound to the keys without control. That's a convention. It's not uh, enforced, but it's a pretty good convention. Um, OK, and if you press the same uh, F and B with meta, you can jump word-wise. And uh, if you press control together with um, meta, I don't put that in here, but you can also put control together with that. Ah, in some modes it works. In, uh, for example, in code modes, uh, it uh, means jump to the next expression instead of the next word. This can be handy. Um, so you can basically deduce uh, these things by just adding more uh, modifier keys to your combinations <laughs> and see what happens. That's quite nice. Yes, <laughs> I think we can find a way. Yeah, typical. Yeah, there it is. So that's where it comes from. Because uh, some modes are very excessive at uh, forcing you to press many modifier keys at the same time. So <laughs> that's how it works. Uh, and I don't know why the screen is OK. Um, right, so uh, then Control-A for jumping to the beginning of the line, Control-E for jumping 
to the end of the line. That's also very easy to reach uh, with your with a single hand. And uh, meta v and control v, I don't use that very often, but the page up and page down keys are most of the time also very far out uh, from the home row. Is it what's it called, right? So um, that's why uh, these are also convenient, but I use them rarely. But you may. And um, yeah, another way to navigate uh, in Emacs, it's a common way to, to search. Uh, so you, you look at the text and you know, ah, I want to go there. Let's say I want to go here to software. So I just press Control S and start typing software. And while I'm typing, oh, sorry, uh, it's um, highlighting all matches and I can jump between the matches. So it's f most of the time, that's the fastest way uh, to go to a place you want to edit. So press Control S and then start typing something that's in the buffer. And then press Control S again to jump to the next uh, uh, occurrence of uh, of the search term, or you press Control R to jump to the previous one. In that case, it's a bit boring. Uh, let's say A. So I can with Control S, I can just continue, and I could also continue to type uh, to, to search for more A B, and then it search for A B. I can also delete something. So it's uh, I search. It's called I search for interactive search uh, because you can just navigate through the search results. Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, of course, yes. It's not related. It's not an Apple product. <laughs> you see the, there's a, the dash between I and search, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> we have to remove this feature from Emacs then. So uh, searching is a common way to navigate in buffers as well. Um, and very convenient. Okay, we're almost done <laughs> with this uh, basic command stuff. Um, as I said al already that um, uh, selections are called regions and you start, you don't uh, hold down a key to select something, but today's Emacs allows uh, holding down shift to mark something, but uh, in regular Emacs you just press uh, control space uh, to start selecting from where you are right now, then you move around, for example you search Let's let's do that. It's more interesting. Uh, wait a second. Oh man, where were here? So um, let's go here. Then I press Control Space. Now it starts. It says Mark Set down there. Yeah, um, it places a mark. That means uh, it starts the region there. Or the region region starts there. And now now I can press Control S to search for Assume, for example, and then it extends the region there. So Control S uh, throws the anchor and then. You, you move on. And now you have a region, and yet now you can operate on that. Like, um, I don't know, uh, kill it, but I can't kill it because it's read only, but um could also act on it by searching. For if I do a search and race now, it will work on this region, for example. Um, yes, uh, control backspace will kill a word backwards. Uh, that's also very, oh man, this I'm not used to using this buffer switching mode. Uh, damn it. Ah, if you, by the way, if you switch buffers, if you could press Control X B, uh, you can also enter a non-existing buffer, and it will just go there and create it uh, under that name. So it's quite convenient to just fire up a random scratch buffer to try something, or, um, or to demonstrate something like that. So pressing Control Backspace will kill the word left of the point. Um, control S Backspace. That means Control Shift Backspace. We haven't seen that now so far. Control Shift Backspace will. Uh, uh, kill the current line, so and put it in the kill ring. Um, what do we else? Uh, control K, like in these all work in uh, li like I said, all work in read line. So in bash, for example, you can just use these all these commands. Also for killing to the end of the line with Control K or uh, Control Y also works for f pasting what you just killed. That also works on in read line. It's pretty convenient if you uh, realize this uh, way. Uh, after using Emacs for quite a while. <laughs> um, Meta Z is also very nice. I don't use it very often, but it's cool because uh, it ca it's called Zap to Care. <laughs> and then uh, you uh, enter a character you want to kill up to that character. So if, pr if you press D now, it will kill everything until the D. I don't use it very often, but it's cool. <laughs> um, uh, Control W, I think I already mentioned that, will kill the current region. So there you go. Uh, on meta w will do the same. I mean, it, it will not kill the region, but it will place the thing you just in the region in the kill ring without actually killing it. It's, it's like copying. In, uh, but I think let's see the function has has a funny name. 
Kill ring safe, yes, please. <laughs> um, right, control Y for pacing. And that's how you work, uh, how you toggle through the kill ring, right? So you, so you um, press control Y for pacing something. And then if you don't move the point and press meta Y, you can cycle. So first control Y and then keep pressing meta Y to cycle through the kill ring. And control slash or control underscore uh, gives you the undo mechanism, which is yeah, this this un this tricky undo thing. So uh, the the one problem I have with this is uh, to redo something. If I uh, undid a few things and then I wanted to redo the last thing, that's not you. You have to do something and then you have to undo again, and then it works. Then it will undo your undo undo or something like that. It's a bit mind-bending. <laughs> right? You will learn when you get into that situation. <laughs> Okay, almost done. Uh, you need, or uh, you have a question? Yes. The, you mean? Uh, uh, yes. 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 You. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, the mark can also be used to as a, I don't know, jump to uh, marker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that just keeps the last place where you marked just one mark. Ah. Okay. Cool. So it leaves leaves the trail. Okay. Cool. I don't use this. I, uh, I think I, I think I heard it, but I never use it. Yeah, of course. Yes, this is, I think this is called registers, right? Uh, where you put it, you put uh, locations in the register. There are many many concepts in in, in Emacs and uh, placing marks or or uh, bookmarks. There are many options for that, and it's really a zoo of stuff. So you have to pick and try what works for you. Um, okay, th so we were just talking about this uh, argument, and control U is the universal argument, and it pops up in documentation often. Uh, so it says this command does th this and that, and if you uh, pass the universal argument or call the uh, call it with the universal argument, then it does that. So um, what that means is you press control U before executing the command, so uh, or before. Uh, entering the key combination uh, of the command. So you press control U and then you say control F for moving to the right. It will move four characters to the right. That's one of the things the universal argument does. Move, do something four times. I have no idea where that comes from. Probably indention or something. Uh, it's a indentation. Uh, it's probably something, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. But, but you can also press control U, then press a number like five and then say X and it enters five X's. So you can use that to repeat uh, n times um, everything. So you can also do uh, uh, search and replace n times. Okay, that doesn't make sense, but <laughs> uh, something like that. Uh, every command you can uh, execute can be executed multiple times in uh, succession if you pass a universal argument with a number. And you can also just press control with a number if it's a single number. Oh, no. 99 L. Okay, so I just pressed Control 99 and then L, and it entered 99 S. So that also works. Um, and for example, for the search, we just saw if you pass it the universal argument, then you get regex search. So that's actually available. Uh, yeah, right. It, the other one I was looking up was not interactive regex search, so that's why it doesn't show up. So you can turn your regular eye search into a, a regex eye search if you pass the universal argument. So it's usually uh, it j usually means uh, activate the other thing or use the other thing. Like, yeah, this is something you have to keep in mind. Okay, that's uh, um, that's it for the for the basics. Um, it's quite a bit, but uh, as I said, you once you digested these uh, basics and are comfortable working with them somewhat, uh, the rest basically uh, uh, self-explanatory or exploratory. <laughs> um, so, any questions up to that point? How, what time is it? Oh, it's quite late already. <laughs> Are you hungry or thirsty? <laughs> um, so you basically 
We now know how to, uh, at least know or heard of uh, how to, or if you followed along, maybe you also tried, how to uh, work with files with the basic input output uh, concepts or interaction concepts of, the, of Emacs. And you didn't do anything with extensions or whatever, or, or modes even. So we just used the fundamental mode, which allows you to enter text and yeah, save it to file and stuff like that. But that's also that's already pretty useful. <laughs> uh, and as I said, you can build from there. So let's uh, take a look maybe at a few interesting modes, like I uh, presented earlier, if you're interested. And uh, keep it short, and maybe we should either move it to tomorrow. Good point, yes. Um, yes, we need to do this, of course. Uh, so whenever you start Emacs, uh, it will be in, in uh, the startup, default startup configuration. It doesn't, doesn't do any th anything interesting. So you want to do, uh, I don't know. Let's say we want to get rid of this um, bar here, and uh, we need to uh, call this function at startup. So what we do is we create a .emacs file, which is uh, we can do this now because we know the file command, of course. So uh, in your home directory, you can create a .emacs um, uh, file. And this one is um, automatically executed when Emacs starts up. And it's just an elisp program. So you can enter any elisp expression in here. So let's put in uh, menu or tab bar mode 0. Uh, is it right? No. What is it called again? Toolbar mode. OK, that hides it. Uh, let's turn it on again. <laughs> uh, save to the file with Control x Control s um, as we just learned. Uh, ah, I didn't tell you the shortcut to exit Emacs, because you don't need it most of the time. But uh, I thought it's <laughs> you now you need it, because we want to demonstrate that it works. <laughs> uh, that's Control x Control c And in the default com uh, configuration, it won't even ask you whether you want to quit, so it's a bit dangerous. <laughs> uh, Unless you have some unchanged saves, uh, changes, unsaved changes, right? So I um, I exited the, my Emacs now. Let's start it up again. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually exit. I'm running in uh, Emacs daemon mode, so it d doesn't really quit. Right. So, and if I start it up now, oh. Oh yes, very clever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you can see uh, it works. Did that work now? Let's start it again. No, oh, no, sorry. That's my setup. I'm, let's just do it the right way. So there you go. Ah, right. Uh, you didn't see that on my configuration now. Um, so as we can see, the toolbar is now gone. So that's your entry point to co customizing Emacs. For example, um, there is a function to load a color theme. Uh, if you want to interactively call a function, meta x. So we press meta x, and then we say load theme. Load theme is uh, yeah, right, the, the command for loading a color theme. Uh, it will ask you for a theme name, which you can autocomplete. So let's say Mysterioso. Okie dokie, looks good. So we want to keep that. And we can just put what we just, uh, I will load a, a lighter one again. Uh, what's the default one? Um, so I should be able to just put it here. Load theme, misterioso. Okay. So just uh, the thing we just um, entered internally, we can also just put it in the file, and it should, uh, if everything works out. Right. So there is my uh, color theme. So there's no configuration um, system or anything. Uh, you just call call the functions or set some values, and everything uh, works like that. Of course, this can grow into a really big file, and uh, which contains lots of uh, random crap. So you want, at some point, uh, organize that a bit nicer. And um, for now, but I won't show you anything about that um, because that's a matter of taste. And uh, for, for the beginning, it's good to just have one .emacs file and stuck, stick your stuff in there, and you understand how it works. It's pretty simple. Um, okay, let's load. Question. Let's load a brighter one again. It's okay. So, um, yeah, question? Uh huh. <laughs> yes, uh, there what he refers to is the so called customize mode. And uh, 
or something, or customize. Uh, it can reach it when, uh, through, of course, MetaX uh, customize. Right. And there you have an interactive system with ugly buttons uh, to, uh, yeah, to configure stuff like that. So I think there's also a theme. As you can see, that's, this is just a buffer. Um, so those look like buttons, but they are just text with a bevel uh, background and stuff like that. So you can press them, but it's, oh, press that. Um, so yeah, the system exists. I don't know how it got there. It's, uh, it's a matter of taste, I think. It generates code. So um, if you edit something here, then it writes a file somewhere and stores uh, what you set in the file. Um, but you, you won't learn a lot by that way, of course, because you don't use the ELISP system, really. Uh, you just tweak a few uh, settings in, uh, in this GUI thing. Um, but I think, OK, it's OK to start out, I guess, um, or to discover stuff. Um, but you are mo much more flexible if you, if you really uh, dive into the ELISP and learn how to do loops or something like that. For example, yeah, let's say you want to bind something to all keys from 1 to 0, and then uh, you just loop over them and, uh, I don't know, generate key bindings. And that's not possible with the, the customized mode. So I guess it's that's probably some split in the Emacs community. <laughs> uh, some people like it and some people don't really like it. So it's a matter of taste. I don't use it at all, so I can't really say anything about it. Um, and this actually works quite well with uh, having this in the file. And you learn more that way. Nice. Um, so what I wanted to, um, why, why I uh, urged you to use Emacs 24 is um, that there is now a built-in package managing management system, which is called uh, package, I think, yeah, package. So you press meta x and call package list packages, and it, uh, that, that's where it shows that there is no namespace system because everything is prefixed with package. <laughs> um, and this lists all packages which are available on uh, the, in, in this case, it's just the GNU repository, so it's, it doesn't have that much. Um, but it lists all kinds of extensions, and you can install them by just, uh, let's, let's take the memory usage mode, just uh, press return on it, and then press in the install thing. So this is su similar to the customize mode, but I think in this case, it's, better it's a better tool because, uh, I don't know, the, the other way would be to manually assemble files from the internet, scrape files from the internet and put them somewhere and um, manually compile them. And this is, it, it does everything for you. So you just press enter and then it will download and compile and install it. And now we have the memory usage thing. I don't know what it actually does. Okay, so you, it says right here what it does. Uh, provide the command memory usage, uh, which lists all buffers and how much memory they use. So let's try that. You see, I just downloaded this from the internet. Uh, it compiled itself and installed itself and loaded itself. And now I have the command in my Emacs. So it's, um, I could install and uh, extend it from right inside uh, of itself. That's cool. Um, of course, I have now downloaded code from the internet, which is probably not trustworthy. But I think there's some, now there's no real trust model in there. But it's at least a curated repository in that case. So unless someone messes with the DNS, uh, it should work. <laughs> uh, so let's try the memory usage. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that mode, so it's not interesting. Okay, so that's, that's your gateway to getting interesting modes. Um, uh, oh no, I, I actually have the Marmalade repository activated, I think. Um, but there, Emacs itself already comes with very many interesting modes, so you don't actually need this at the beginning, I guess. Um, for example, the DRAD mode, that's uh, what I s hinted at with file amendment. So uh, you have a command control xd. Control xd asks you for a directory. Uh, let's say code public uh, chicken x. So it asks you for a directory and it opens, of course, a buffer um, which looks similar to the listing uh, ls-l would give you. Um, and it's interactive So and it's read-only, of course. So you can press n and p to uh, navigate to go up and down uh, between the lines. You can also press Control and Control P, doesn't matter. Um, and you can actually enter these directories. Okay, there's nothing in there. Uh, with Q, you can kill the read-only buffer, uh, or you usually can kill read-only buffer, so you just press Return, Return, and then if you don't want to go there, press Q, Return, Return, and then you can also enter a file to edit it. So that's a nice way to um, navigate your file system. Ivan. <laughs> 
So you can also, that's, that's very nice to navigate if, uh, a bit more um, conveniently. But you can also, so for example, rename files. So you press Shift R and it asks you to rename, uh, re yeah, rename the thing I'm currently on to whatever. There you go. So now if, yeah, right, if you press G, it updates the view. So now uh, it, uh, G is um, either, Control G is abort and G is oftentimes refresh. Or Control G um, is also oftentimes refresh. I don't know why, so. Uh, yeah, but, but in, in some modes it also means, uh, or does it? No, it's indeed, yeah, in read-only modes, uh, pressing G without control means re reload in, but or refresh, so whatever. Th those are just conventions, so it's not nothing to rely on. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, you can you don't have to leave your um, you don't have to break your flow to um, rename a file or stuff like that or to uh, do more complex stuff. You can mark many files at once or directories in this case and rename all of them. Ah, sorry, move them to some other place. Of course, in that case. Yes, I don't dare. <laughs> uh, we can do this. Um, so I can. Um, of course, this is a read-only buffer, but I can unlock the read-only <laughs> mode, and uh, I can say uh, change to W DRAID mode, which means write DRAID mode or something. So now this buffer is writable and actually changes if you com you can commit it. Or let's not do that. Oh, maybe it's okay. So you just rename a few things here, edit a few things, and you can even edit uh, permissions here. Uh, no, okay, that, uh, that's not possible. Okay, <laughs> I was. Uh, I think it works. Uh, no. hmm. Dates, something like that. Ah, I think owners. No, I also don't. Okay, so um, right now this is an editable mode, and uh, I do a few things here, and then I can press Control C, Control C, and then it will do this. So <laughs> I could just uh, search and replace in that buffer to rename a few directories. Yes, right. <laughs> that, that's a bit da dangerous, uh, but uh, sometimes it's really handy. So just uh, it's, it's there if you if you want to use it. Um, or there's another nice mo uh, mode I recently discovered. It's called occur. Occur. Um, you just uh, run it. I th it has no default binding. If you, if you run it, it asks you for regular expression. And then let's say you no UTF is boring. Uh, let's say uh, um, what's often let's say va. Okay. So and then it will make uh, open another buffer containing the matches, and um, you can navigate those. Uh, and jump to wait a second. There's some. There's a way. Well, of course, yeah. You can just uh, jump to the results there. It's, it's not. Uh, it's it's different from the interactive mode, of course, because you see all the matching lines uh, in one number. And you can also unlock this one. Uh, I, I also get how. No, how does it work? As you can see, I don't use it very often. Oh, it's occur occur edit mode. So now I can actually edit these uh, occurrences here inside that buffer. Oh, this. I wonder if it doesn't work <laughs> for for read only buffer. Okay, shit. Um, um, but you get the idea. So I can uh, can use to edit search results. It's quite handy sometimes. So there are, m there are many, many, many more modes like that. Um, I'm thinking of. Oh, there's a question. Yes, sorry. Uh, oh yes, um, for files or in files. Uh, yes, there is. There is a locate thing interface, I think. Yeah, locate. <laughs> you can just call it from inside uh, Emacs. Uh, let's try it. Okay, that was not okay, <laughs> but it works. Um, what's that? Ah, StarCraft. Okay, <laughs> StarCraft map. Yes. Um, um, there is a. There's another nice one uh, that's called rgrep, for example. Uh, it's it does a recursive grab uh, across files. And um, say let's say we search for define in files uh, inside code public chicken eggs. Um, let's take a small one. No, it's not small. <laughs> so there. So I search for a term inside this directory, and it does a. Oh fuck! That was sorry. Uh, define uh, search for define in files. Okay, I have to give. I have to give a. Um, um, a gr gr glob there. So there you go. And now it um, 
it executed this command, so you could also reuse this on your shell. And um, you can just, uh, with n and p, step through these uh, occurrences and will open the buffers as you uh, step through them and uh, open the files and buffers as you step through them. And um, that's a really nice way to navigate around in an unknown code base, for example. If you, you know, ah, okay, I want to find all places where this token appears and you don't have a... Uh, yeah, you, of course, you don't have something like a uh, Java IDE where you can jump to the places uh, directly most of the time. Some modes are like that, but many modes are not. And then you can use this to conveniently um, find all occurrences of something in, in a directory. Quite useful. I use this very much, actually. And of course, the um, integration for most Lisps is very good. So. Uh, you can connect into running closure processes, for example, and evaluate stuff in there. Um, not going to show that now, unless somebody's interested in that. Um, yeah, right. So, any any uh, questions or ideas? Yes. <laughs> Well, um, what it does, it downloads the, f uh, the, the extension, uh, it, it byte compiles it, so Emacs Lisp has a byte compiler and you can uh, ahead of time compile it, so it loads faster, and then it drops it in your .emacs.d, which is a directory which um, uh, is consulted when Emacs starts up, and then you have uh, this ELPA directory in there. And every um, extension gets a directory in this ELPA directory, and uh, it's auto this I think this file is loaded then, so it automatically uh, executes this, and which uh, doesn't mean it actually loads the package, but it will load the package once you run this function, so it's lazily loaded when you need it, and you don't have to configure anything usually to, lo to use it in the basic configuration. Only if you want to uh, use, uh, of course, if you want to customize it, then you have to put something in your e .emacs, but if you just want to uh, be able to use it, then you just, yeah, just call the, uh, the respective function and you're good to go. But that's a new thing, this uh, list packages and installing it from the, from the repository. That's uh, And it's super useful, I think. It's also very good to uh, update your uh, extensions to a new version. Usually, uh, before that, you usually downloaded it at some point and then just kept it at the version you downloaded and didn't really get new features. Um, okay, uh, anyone, uh, anything else? I could show another uh, nice mode I have in mind right now. So I would switch to my real Emacs now. Um, that was just a, a blank configuration, and I'm going to really delete that. Um, okay. Okay, shit, now my configuration is gone. <laughs> you see, mine starts up a while, but it's not terribly long. Uh, and it's, I'm going to load a brighter theme. Okay, so one thing that's already different, if I press meta x, I have this uh, fancy autocomplete thing down there. So uh, this, this allows a uh, quicker navigation, for example. It's called I do mode. I can show you if you, uh, you can approach me about it later. Um, let's load, oh shit, load theme. Uh, the bright one, okay. So um, one mode I really like is, uh, is, an, is a Git integration, Magit it's called. So uh, let's for that one. So I'm okay. I'm editing some code here, and um, now I yeah make some changes. Uh, edit here. Uh, edit something here. Lol, and I delete something here. Okay. So uh, now I can press Control C I in my case, and it will pop up a buffer of um, yeah Git status basically, but it's an interactive Git status. So uh, I see all changes, and I can. For example, uh, expand that and, and walk through all the changes there are I made to my file. And I can also jump there. If I, if I press return, I jump to the exact position uh, of that hunk. Um, very useful. I can also stage a uh, commit from here. So I can just I say, OK, I want to commit this bit, but not that one. So I press S on that. Bam. So And now it's uh, on the stage changes. I have just staged this single hunk. And um, I can now commit for it with pressing C. It opens a buffer. Um, remove some useless function. Okay, and now pressing Control C, Control C commits it. Now it's committed to my repository, and I can press uh, L twice, and I get a view of the history. And there's my commit. 
Um, so I can uh, step through the history log easily. And I can also jump to stuff when, if it still exists uh, from, from, the from the log buffer. So this is a, the previous code, and I can just jump to the file uh, that contains this change. It's quite useful for browsing code repositories. Yes? Oh, uh, yes, it's a, there's a third party mode, so you need to install it first. Uh, it's called Magit, uh, sorry, it's called it's spelled like this. Um, uh, you yeah, you can install it through the package repository, I th think. Sorry, no, you can't. Uh, not not by the default. Yeah, you need to you need to add uh, uh, th another repository. You, the default one that comes with Emacs, it just it's it's the GNU repository and doesn't have very many extensions because they have this um, complicated process of contributing. So uh, first, I'm sorry. First, I need to undo this commit because I may use it and don't. Maybe I need it. So I go to the uh, last revision, press X for reset. And then I'm back to my original state again. And I can unstage this change, and I can also kill this change. Pressing K, discard changes, yes, OK, then it's gone. So don't, uh, I can use most of the stuff of Git uh, interactively through this, uh, through this mode, and it's really cool. Um, let's see. OK, that's the repository. Somebody else maintains it now. I think there's a video tutorial of that some in, in here somewhere. It's quite nice. And um, what you need to download it through package uh, to the package system is the Marmalade Emacs repository, um, spreadable ELISP. <laughs> uh, so I, it's explained in here how to c configure it. I can't remember now. Um, somehow you have to do it somehow. You don't have to sign up. That's just if you want to submit something. Do you see it now? I can't remember, but I have it in my configuration. So I will also post a link to my configuration, which lives on Bitbucket, and you can steal bits from there. I wouldn't recommend using it right away because uh, you have to. I, I think you should just uh, start uh, on your own and uh, get rolling yourself, so to to learn more. Uh, but there should be. There sh I think it's an init AL because it's it's, it's very basic. Yes. That's how you configure the Marmalade repository, but it also should be on the uh, on the website. So as you see, it's just a call to a f to a list function again, <laughs> and you add something to a list that's named package archives, and it's yeah. So that that should be possible to to install. Ah, and you need to put this package initialize in your .emacs. Otherwise, uh, what I just said is wrong. It won't automatically load unless you call this. <laughs> so yeah, there are a few caveats. Um, but you can read up on that on the Marmalade page. They, they show you how to configure it. Yeah, right. Sure. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I, I guess I, I haven't seen any collisions so far. I guess they would just, oh shit, uh, they, they would just uh, show up both. Um, so it gives you a view of both repositories if you Yeah, yeah, it's quite a big Yes. Well, you just have to try, I think. Um but they have versions, right? So could just use the newer one or <laughs> if it doesn't work use the old one. So um this is quite new at all and uh, th there may also be bugs in there still uh, so don't don't be annoyed if it doesn't work right away, but <laughs> it's much more convenient than it used to be, so uh, that's quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Melpa, that's so that's new, probably. I don't know it. Okay, I only know about Marmalade, so cool. Yeah, another one. Ah, right, so the, they apparently have a lack. Uh yeah, just put everything in. That's cool. Maybe there's something in there that isn't in Marmalade. Marmalade is a bit slow, so not a bad idea to do that. Maybe I'll try that. Cool. Thanks for the for the hint. What is written in Lisp? No, no, no. Yeah, wait, there is a, a web server in Elisp. That's true. You can actually run a web application from inside your Lisp, but I wouldn't recommend it. I guess. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> There's also a web browser in Elisp. Uh, oh no, it's not installed by default anymore. Okay, uh, there's uh, W3M is uh, uh, available as an Elisp package somehow. 
So you can do that. Email is very nice, I think. Uh, some There are several email clients. Yes, you can also start a shell here, ANSI term, for example. Yeah, but it, it's, um, I tried for a while, but it's uh, not, you always have some collision somewhere, so it's not really great. So I stick to X term for that. <laughs> What? <laughs> yes. ANSI term is the best emulator model for us. Uh, I think. That's right. There's E shell, which uh, allows you to, I don't know, uh, pipe a buffer uh, in, into a command and stuff like that. Um, so that, that's really sophisticated, but I have not uh, learned it yet. It's not completely, yeah. So ANSI term gets close, but not com close enough for my for my uses. But uh, you just mentioned SSH. Um, there's a nice mode called tramp mode that allows you to connect uh, through SSH to a, to another host and edit files right there. So it opens a buffer of a file that's living on another machine which you only have access to SSH to. I could, I could show you. I, you have just to believe me that it works. So <laughs> um, let's say, uh, no, no, uh. yes, it also works uh, to call sudo through, uh, thr open a buffer with sudo from an, an Emacs. That's true. So now uh, I'm connected to my host here and no, wait, it doesn't work. Uh. Okay, it seems to collide with my. I don't use it very often, uh, but it but it usually works. <laughs> very good. Um, it's ca sometimes it's handy, but uh, it's maybe a bit overrated. So uh, don't put it on the advertisement. Um, thinking of another one. So uh, this is the part the other guy, uh, the other Moritz, actually uh, has wanted to do uh, because he uses. Uh, many more fancy modes, which are uh, show better show off effects. Um, so I suggest um, we wrap it up here, or is, is there more? Qu are there more questions? I mean, I, I will be around all all evening. So if you if you have some more specific questions, just approach me. And uh, as I said, we can uh, meet up here tomorrow in the uh, lunch break. Maybe you can dabble with it with the basics for uh, tonight, and then tomorrow you will have some more questions or. Advanced questions, that's right, <laughs> and problems, so that's right, yeah. If there are no more questions, I say thank you very much for your attention and for your time. <laughs>